Oh, it's towering in front, isn't it? How is that possible? It's jumped up all the way along yeah, the flat. Look. How was that happening? It was like nothing I've ever seen. It went so quickly from a tiny fire on the outside and fizzed up, down, sideways. It looked like someone had poured petrol down the side of the building. Seventy-one people died in the Grenfell fire. This firefighter tells us more lives could have been saved and making residents stay inside and wait for help was a mistake. When we were sent into the tower, we couldn't see much. Going onto the stairwell on certain floors, it was eerily quiet and it soon became apparent that the radios weren't working and we had lost all communication. The higher up we went in the tower, it felt like you were very much alone. You couldn't radio back to let people know where you were, what you were doing, if you had done the job you had been sent up there to do. Do you think that more lives could have been saved? I think there would have been more chance of getting people out, yeah. If we'd had proper radio communications, yeah, there was a chance we could have got a few more people out. Knowing how advanced communications and the communication systems that we've got out there the fact we are not given the best equipment to save people's lives, that does make me angry. Sky News has learned that there was serious doubt about the quality of the radio communication system. The fire brigade union had argued there were issues with it for some time, well before the night of the fire. But perhaps more controversial was telling residents to stay in their flats and wait for help, a policy this firefighter believes should have been changed. Looking back, I, I do think there was a stage in that night that the stay put policy should have been changed. I don't think it was done early enough. I don't know if it would have caused some kind of stampede on the stairwell. I don't know if it would have saved more lives or, or killed more people. I, I really don't know. But I just believe, from what I saw on the outside of that building, it was quite apparent, quite early on, that these people should have been given a chance to get out. So yeah, once it was seen that we had lost control of that fire, the stay put policy should have been changed. The tower had 23 floors. Coroner reports show many bodies were found in flats on the upper levels as people fled to escape the fire. But the equipment firefighters had made reaching the top practically impossible. We carry standard duration breathing apparatus, which gives about 25 to 30 minutes of air, depending on how hard you are working inside the building. So you can imagine sending someone up that stairwell, up to the 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd floor. By the time they get up there, they haven't got hardly any time at all before they've got to come back down again. It soon became apparent during the night that Sending us in with standard rather than extended durations was literally suicide. We were going in there doing two minutes of work and then we had to run out again. I know a few firefighters whose air ran out who came down with what they would say sucking on plastic. It's a miracle no firefighters were killed during that night. It was quite clear early on our standard duration breathing apparatus wasn't good enough. And that's not all. This firefighter questions the policy of not having longer length ladders for high rise fires. Someone in their wisdom decided that long ladders weren't needed at these high rise incidents. The fire brigade have said that those ladders wouldn't have made a difference that night but they've also decided to bring them back. So ladders go to initial attendance on high rises from now on. So read into that what you will. Do you think it would have made a difference on the night? A ladder carries a monitor, which can put a hell of a lot more water on the fire than what we can with just a hose. I don't know. 
but there's a chance it could have controlled it. There is a chance, if it was there right from the start, it might have kept it to the lower floors. It would have been above the floor of the fire, so it would have been raining down water onto the fire. It was such a quick, severe, rapid spread. We're never going to know if it would have made a difference, but it definitely wouldn't have made matters worse. Of all the firefighters on duty, some were highly experienced, others just weeks into the job. For all of them, the events of that night was something they'd never experienced. When your whole communication system breaks down, it turns everything into guesswork. It was the biggest failure of the night as far as the fire brigade was concerned. No one could talk to anyone outside. You imagine a firefighter going up to a certain floor in Grenfell Tower and telling someone to stay put because that's what they've been told to tell them and not knowing that the outside of the building is fully engulfed in flames. Now firefighters have to live with that because no one could tell them inside the building that there is a raging inferno outside. I'm sure, I know, firefighters would have made a decision to get more people out of that building if they knew what was going on on the outside of that building. The tower was literally crumbling apart. I can only describe it as like a war zone out there. And at certain stages, we were taking casualties out and taking as many firefighters with breathing apparatus into the building. And you literally fell into craters and things were exploding above your head. And we were using riot shields to protect people going in and out of the building. Nothing can prepare you for what happened that night. This fire presented challenges like no other. And then the realization the cladding on the outside of the building was not only flammable, but it was waterproof. The water was literally bouncing off the cladding. We would try and get at angles to try and get inside it. At certain stages, I can't explain it, the water was hitting the fire and seemed to be pushing it out somewhere else. We couldn't stop it. We'd never seen anything like it. We've never had any sort of training for this sort of stuff. And the fact that this cladding is on so many buildings around this country, surely firefighters should know about it. And surely if it is allowed on, some sort of training should be given to us to at least prepare us for this sort of fire. This is the headquarters of the London Fire Brigade. They've refused to discuss the points we've raised on camera, instead sending a statement from the Deputy Assistant Commissioner, Andy Bell. In it, he says it's essential that we understand what happened on the night of the Grenfell Tower fire to prevent such an incident ever happening again. Firefighters will give evidence properly later this year as part of the public inquiry and every aspect of the brigade's response is part of the ongoing police investigation. We cannot undermine the legal processes and react to unofficial claims at this time. Firefighters on the front line that night say the memories will haunt them forever. Just looking up at the tower and sitting there after being in that building and trying to recover and looking at all the shocked faces of all the firefighters. It was horrible. It was like a numbness and just wide-eyed firefighters who were just in shock. I've been into fires in tower blocks since and I'm not going to lie, it's always at the back of my mind and it will be at the back of my mind for the rest of my career and I might make different decisions than I would have before 14th of June. It's probably changed me as a firefighter, but when it comes to it, you just have to do your job and carry on. I'm a completely changed man. I live with it day to day, and there's not a day goes past that I don't think about it, and it's really tough. There's still so much guilt as well that we had to leave 71 people in there. <laughs>